introduction and uh, appreciate the opportunity to share some of the cases um, that we've done with Luminos. Um, I think it is a product that offers some really unique solutions to problems that we're still kind of struggling with in orthopedic trauma. So um, I'm going to jump right into it here and just uh, share my screen and we're going to go through some cases. Um, these cases are all um, fairly similar, but um, I think we will, as you go through them, start to think about different ways um, of using this product. Um, so um, one of our one of my favorite uses, and I think um, Dr. Mobley and I use this quite a bit in Tallahassee for bicondylar tibial plateau fractures. Um, some of the big issues with these bicondylar plateau fractures that anybody who operates on them a lot knows that you need some sort of medial column support to prevent the varus collapse and lateral implant failure. Um, the big issue then though is if you do make an incision medially of any sort, um, oftentimes you can wind up with medial wound problems. A lot of times these fractures don't happen in the best uh, patients. Um, a lot of them are low energy in the elderly and osteoporotic, sometimes obese and otherwise unhealthy. Um, and I think if you were to, you know, put all of the complications, wound complications that orthopedic surgeon, orthopedic trauma surgeons have, in a bucket, I would I would bet that a high proportion of them are all related to bicondylar tibial plateau fractures with medial and lateral incisions. So um, there's a really high complication rate, much higher than other places in the body uh, with these bicondylar tibial plateau fractures, especially in patients who are poor hosts. And I think Illuminos, um, in the way that I'm going to show it, and I've seen it used a couple of other ways as well, can provide medial column support in, uh, in, a, in a lot of these fractures, maybe not all of them, but in a lot of these fractures and can eliminate the need for medial incisions and an additional wound uh, that we would have to worry about. So this is a fairly uh, typical case, 59-year-old uh, female, osteoporosis, uh, walking her dogs in the yard and one of them rammed into her. So you can see she's got, um, you know, what initially appears to be a Schatzker II fracture, but CT scan uh, reveals that there's, you know, medial column disruption. Uh, the CT scan on the far right side here, um, we can see that crack in the metaphysis there. And to me, this is the telltale sign of, of failure if you're going to use a laterally based implant only. Um, so typically prior to using Illuminos, this would be something that would require, you know, lateral plate and screw fixation with, uh, with possibly a percutaneous plate medially or some other adjunct medially to support the medial column. Um, using the Illuminos system, you can um, make a percutaneous incision laterally. Um, I prefer to use the awl. You can use a starting drill to pass the guide wire up into the medial column and get it directly underneath the subchondral bone in that medial column. As you can see in this image, I've already got the femoral distractor on, uh, holding the medial column at the appropriate length, on both in the AP and lateral views. Um, and this is the image on the far left, shows the Illuminos uh, balloon in position, filled uh, and already hardened, supporting the medial column. And you can see on these two x-rays, once you stabilize the medial column, then you just have to do the lateral joint work with um, some sort of bone graft in the metaphysis to support your reduction. And then a lateral plate and screw construct with those screws going through the voluminous after it's already hardened, giving you a nice good medial column support with screws through it as well. Um, and this is, this is her uh, at nine weeks. Um, you can see the Illuminos enters about midway down this plate on the lateral cortex. Uh, I prefer to use a plate that has a, an outrigger on it so that you can do this through a fairly small incision up top and percutaneous screws below. Um, I like doing the uh, Illuminos laterally because then I can use a longer plate to bridge that, uh, that stress riser that would form either where the plate or where the Illuminos ends. Um, 
And here's her at three months with no varus collapse, and she seems to have healed her meal compartment and um, maintained her appropriate alignment as she's walking on it. And all of this was done through, you know, a small incision laterally up by the joint line, uh, and then a percutaneous incision distally to place the aluminos uh, laterally as well, which avoided the need for any sort of medial incisions or implants. There's another case, a uh, 62-year-old osteoporotic female. Um, you might think that's all we have in Tallahassee, but we're going to be showing you a couple more. The, um, so this lady has kind of the classic bicondylar pattern with a fairly intact medial plateau, but a definite metaphyseal fracture uh, with posterior medial comminution. Um, she came in when one of my partners was on call and uh, appropriately put her into an external fixture. So here's her uh, slightly distracted in the fixator. We've got a CT scan. The uh, image on the left is the medial plateau showing that no significant articular work needs to be down there. And then the lateral is in the middle showing that there's disruption of the lateral plateau. Uh, this 3D CT showing the posterior medial cortex showed that there's a good cortical read there to reduce the medial cortex, which, you know, in a young, healthy person would make it tempting to uh, even make a small incision there to directly visualize that reduction in order to accurately reduce the medial column. Um, this obviously was not the case with this lady with her, her, her body habitus and her bone quality. Um, so I elected to do something different. Um, so with the external fixator still on, I was able to use a percutaneous clamp and adjust the length of the medial column with the X-fix and percutaneously reduce the medial column. Uh, with only the two stab incisions uh, for the clamp present, I then placed the aluminos device and you can see there's placing the cord, I mean, the, uh, the vault of guide wire. Uh, and then the technique shows reaming over it and then deploying the balloon uh, along the medial column, and this was left, uh, the clamp was left in place until the uh, aluminos had completely hardened. And then similar to the first case, you can see then the lateral joint, lateral joint work was done with a femoral distractor in place and lateral plate and screw construct with the majority of those scr screws going through the aluminos to provide appropriate medial column support. Um, so to me, this is this is really a big thing to not have to make any medial incisions uh, for these tibial plateau fractures. And this is the one that that uh, is kind of the kiss of death when you see these patients: um, morbidly obese, possible rheumatoid arthritis, hepatitis unspecified, um, coronary artery disease, right heart dysfunction, OSA, morbid obesity, hypertension. You can see. Uh, all the things going on in her medical history, and she comes in with this. Um, so we can see she's got lateral lateral joint depression and widening. She also has a crack in the metaphysis there that indicates to me, you know, significant osteoporosis, significant medial column instability that's going to fail with a lateral only construct. So similar to what you've seen before. Uh, femoral distractor, uh, aluminos done through the lateral side, distally running up into the subchondral bone, deploying the aluminos, inflating the balloon, checking the reduction before, uh, before putting the light to it to, to make it hard, and then um, doing the lateral joint work and fixing that with the lateral plate and screws. Um, this, this, to me, has, has really changed um, the ability of my practice to not worry as much about these patients because I think anytime you're having to put medial plates or medial incisions around the proximal tibia, even if you're able to do it percutaneously with a minimally invasive, minimally invasive percutaneous technique, there still seems to be wound problems. And this lady's leg was massive. So um, the ability to do this with this implant and have this kind of intermedullary strut along the medial column that you can put exactly where you want it um, really is an effective uh, effective method and has made a big difference, I think, in my practice. Um, so here she is at eight weeks. 
Um, you can see the size of her leg on the shadow there. Um, she obviously has been walking on it. Um, when you're this big, you can't not walk on your leg, um, but there's been no varith collapse. Um, she's had a slight collapse on the lateral side, um, but she is walking on it at this point. So, um, you know, we use Illuminos a lot of different places around the body. Um, this, this is one of the places I think that makes uh, a huge difference as far as avoiding another surgery, avoiding another incision and reducing on your complications rates, um, especially in patients who are on dialysis, morbidly obese, severely osteoporotic, malnourished, um, all of those things together uh, in some of these patients that we see. This is a, a really nice tool to have in our toolbox to be able to do this through much smaller incisions. Really, the you, know, you need about a two, two to three inch incision laterally by the knee uh, in order to do the joint work and to slide your plate down once you've got all that organized. So um, I think that's it.